So, did you ever want to boost you to the Godot platformer controller so that you can double jump and you don't have to do pixel perfect inputs to actually jump from the edge of the terrain? Double jump and coyote time are two very common improvements for platformer games. They are sort of expected by players, and even though coyote time isn't clearly visible, you'll definitely feel if it is not there. Basically, without coyote time, you'll notice that jumping from the very end of the terrain is super hard. You need to time your input very precisely, and you'll probably end up falling off the platforms 9 times out of 10. So to avoid this, let's see how to add those improvements to a typical 2D platformer controller, starting with coyote time. Now, just before we dive in, have you ever wanted to get some professional feedback for your Godot projects? If you join my Patreon as a Square member, you'll get to ask me for personalized reviews once every two months. That's a full analysis of your project, with a detailed report and suggestions for improvement, all this for only 40 bucks. So if you're curious, be sure to have a look at the free article that explains it all over here. Alright, but so suppose that you've got a basic 2D platformer player controller that lets you move left and right and jump when you're currently on the floor. Most of the logic should be handled in the physics process method of the script on your player object, and it will probably look a bit like this. To add coyote time to this setup, the trick is the following. First, go to your player hierarchy and add a new timer node inside, for example, one named Coyote Timer. You can make it last a very short amount, like 0.1 second, if you want the effect to be small and the magical invisible platform extension to be quite short, or you can use a higher amount to make it easier to use, but also a bit more visible to the players. Then, go to your 2D player script and start by getting a reference to this new timer node. In your physics process method, where you compute the velocity and the movements of the player, you'll want to update your jump logic so that it's triggered when the jump input is pressed, and either the player is on the ground or the coyote timer is still running, because this means that the player is still on the invisible extended ledge. Finally, at the end of the physics process function, you want to trigger the coyote timer if the player just left the ground, because you jumped or because you fell from the terrain. To check that you just fell this frame, the easiest solution is to check if you were on the ground just before applying the velocity, and if you're not on the ground anymore after applying it this frame. And so there you go! If you try the game now, you'll see that there is a little delay after you've left the edge of the platform or the terrain, during which you can still jump. However, there's also a little issue, which is that right now you can actually jump endlessly and gradually fly up because nothing stops our jump logic from re-triggering. To fix this, a quick and easy technique is to add a boolean in our player script that checks if we've just jumped. So we'll set it to true when we trigger a jump, reset it to false when we're grounded again, and we'll say that we can only jump if we haven't jumped yet. This way, you see that our avatar can only jump once, but we still get our nice coyote time feature. And the good news is that now we can super easily modify our platformer controller to allow for double jumps too. For that, let's just transform our jumped boolean variable into a jump amount integer variable that will count the current number of jumps and allow us to trigger jumps until we've reached the max amount of jumps. So we'll increase the number of jumps every time we trigger a new one, reset the counter to zero when we're grounded, and say that we can only jump while this amount is strictly less than two. And you see that we've now got a basic double jump mechanic, along with our coyote time from before, that makes our platformer controller really nice and really intuitive to use. The last little improvement we could add is to actually give a little boost to our second jump. This is by no means necessary, but it's a nice way to discreetly make players feel like they just barely grabbed an upper ledge and that they have more power in the air. But in any case, there you go. You now know a few tricks to improve your 2D platformer controller in Godot, with double jump and coyote time, to make it more enjoyable and more intuitive to use. I really hope you liked these extra tips. 
don't hesitate to react in the comments and subscribe to the channel to get more videos. And of course, a huge thanks to my Patreon members for the support and to you for watching. And as always, take care.